we decided to build a new editing PC for the studio, office, home, whatever the hell we have here. And I figured it'd be a good time to share this build with you guys to let you know what we're doing. And uh, maybe we can all just get in a big benefit pile together and benefit from all the beneficial stuff. So here's what we did to build our editing PC. We started off with the Intel Xeon E3-1230 version 3. Uh, it's, a, it's a low cost CPU uh, for what it is because it's essentially an i7 without the graphics. If you need the integrated graphics, you can get like a, a Intel, I don't know, 2545 or 1245 or 1275. Those have graphics on board. They're still Xeons. Um, you're not going to be overclocking a Xeon at all. So just forget about it. But I wanted to keep it nice and cool anyway. So we got some decent cooling. I'll get to that in just a second. Anyway, it's, it's stupid fast. Uh, really works out well for Premiere. The 8350 may be similar price performance, but this does edge the 8350 in rendering in our tests we've done here. For the motherboard, Asus Maximus 6 Gene. It's a micro ATX motherboard that is completely loaded and hey, hold on a minute. This is a gaming motherboard. Why are you, you're not even going to be overclocking, you idiot. Why are you using a ZM with a gaming motherboard? Because I want all the ins and outs and I want all the features and I want the stability of the Asus ROG line. That's why I went with a gaming motherboard. Plus, you've got like eight SATA ports. We did a little overview. Uh, overview. We did a little overview. Yes, just leave all that in. Did a little overview video on this uh, already, so you guys can go and watch that. Uh, but now that I've actually uh, been able to use it, I really like what they've done with the UEFI. Um, when you first boot it up, it goes straight into advanced mode, no messing around with uh, you know easy mode or whatever. But you can get into easy mode if you want to. I really like that. Um, I really like the uh, the sound chip on here. It sounds nice and clean, and it can power my um, 250 ohm headphones. Powered those just fine. Uh, it sounded really good. And we also on the back have uh, an option for uh, Wi-Fi if you want. And there's even a slot. You know, it's an optional thing you plug in to the motherboard uh, that'll give you the um, M.2 compatibility, so you can you know run those future storage technology things. Uh, we've got two slots, that, so you can run, uh, as far as graphics cards go, you can run dual graphics cards in this, and we also have one 4X PCI Express slot, and in that, I'm going to be putting an Evermedia capture card. To keep all this cool, I kind of went crazy with this. You know, we, we had a few Cooler Master products come in, so I kind of took advantage of all the awesome Cooler Master stuff that we had here. This uh, Cooler Master Glacier 240L is ridiculous. It's probably my favorite 240 millimeter radiator ever. It's uh, it's really a Swift Tech design that Cooler Master has been using, and they've, you know, given it a little bit of their own flair, you know, copper bottom uh, as far as on the, uh, the plate goes. And uh, the tubes on this are just massive. It keeps things really, really cool. I didn't really need it because I'm not overclocking, but um, one of the nice things about this is just when I'm regularly using the computer, uh, both the fans on this are static pressure fans. Uh, they don't get extremely loud, so I like that. If you wanted to go even cooler, I've seen some people, some people swap these out for the Noctua fans, but for our purposes, the these fans work just completely the same and they're maybe one decibel louder, so totally fine with that. But yeah, this thing is just, stupid cold for the uh the memory a data we've got 16 gigabytes of their 1866 megahertz memory i've got no complaints with it whatsoever it runs at 1866 all day long uh, it's just uh you know good decent value for the money especially right now it's on sale hey can't beat that i like sales you like sales i hate sales stop it i You're... don't want to save money don't be a negative nancy for the ssd i grabbed one of our trusty a data uh, 120 gigabyte um it's the sx 900 XPG SX900, that's the model number. And I like this one quite a lot. We've used it several times. It's, um, you know, the Sandforce controller, uh, just tried and true stuff. And I've got like several of them all over the place and never had one fail. So I've had good luck with it. It's also around 500 to 550 megabytes per second with the read and the write. So it's really fast. Using that uh, for some programs and the OS. For storage, I decided to get a two terabyte. Uh, it's actually a Western Digital. I almost forgot what it was. It's Western Digital. Got one of the black drives. Uh, I went with two terabytes instead of four terabytes because I've had much better, uh, a much higher success rate with the two terabyte drives and the one terabyte drives than I have with the three and the four terabyte drives. The failure rate's a bit too much for me. So with one of those, you guys can add more of these if you like. And um, I'm using one of those, and then I've got all the other stuff that's going to be stored on the NAS. So not too much storage in the actual uh, editing PC. All right, moving right along, let's talk about the power supply. Now we had a Cooler Master V850 uh, in the house. Took it apart. Took, you know, took a really good look at it. And I guess you guys, we should re we should re render out that video and give it to them. We need to render that out. R -r 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 render, I said. I'm, I'm the rap artist. God, I'm stupid. Um, so we had the V850 here. 
opened it up, looked at it. It's all Japanese capacitors. There's a Seasonic board in there. And uh, the tests are really ridiculous. In this price range, I don't think you're going to be able to find anything better. Um, and also, you know, as far as the 850 goes, it's just ridiculously efficient. Usually around 90% with the low levels that uh, we're giving to it, which, we're, you know, we're probably pulling about... I don't know, five, 600 watts. So it's about 91, 192% efficient. So stupid efficient. And um, it's also really quiet. I like all those things. Put them all together and they make me very happy. So I'm definitely happy with that one. It's also fully modular. So we only have the cables plugged in that we need. Okay, uh, moving on, the case. The case is something I was a little hesitant about because we had the N200 here. We did a review on that and it's, it's small and there's not a gazillion options. But if you want to build like a micro ATX case that's decently small and has some uh, good airflow options, it is good for that. However, the uh, the Glacier 240L does not fit in here because the tubes on the top and everything are just too big. You can fit a 200, you know, 240 millimeter cooler in here, no problem, but not this one. It's a special cooling unit. However, we uh, made it work with uh, some tie downs. Instead of, you know, using the screwdrivers, we just freaking tied it down. So it's actually in there. This is not official, does not work. If you go to Cooler Master's website, it does not work. But if you use the tie downs, it freaking will. And it's completely quiet, no rattling. It's There's, there's no problem. It just freaking works. So, you know, cooling units in there. Um, everything else, I found the build to be a slightly frustrating because it's my hands are big. Uh, there wasn't a lot of room to move around, especially toward the top of the case where the motherboard fits in. But now that it's, you know, everything's in the case and it's built, it's really quiet. It's nice and small and I have no complaints whatsoever. And it actually looks pretty slick with the Asus ROG front panel that we put in there for absolutely no reason. Did I mention we put an ROG front panel in there? So we um, got the ROG front panel and uh, this is the OC, uh, the ROG OC panel. Probably kind of stupid to be using it for this system, but it gives us a readout of the fan speed and the temperature on the front. So that's pretty much what we're using it for. And you can use it to change the fan speed to turbo or whatever, but I'm using AI Suite for that. You can do a stupid amount of things with this. It's mainly for overclocking. It gives you access to just about everything in your UEFI. Uh, I mean, not just uh, V-Core and, and multiplier. It, it lets you mess with the base clock frequency. It lets you mess with like the load line calibration. It lets you mess with all of this stuff right on the actual unit. Just by pressing up and down, you can overclock this thing. Um, and then um, you can monitor several different fans. If you pop it off, like pop off the front, there's uh, four fan headers. They're all four pin fan headers. Uh, so there's that, it takes one SATA power. And um, what else can you do with this thing? Oh yeah, uh, VGA Hotwire will actually work with this unit. So you can overclock your graphics card as well. If you have one of the ROG uh, graphics cards that supports VGA Hotwire, just a ridiculous amount of stuff you can do. Even, there's even extra components on here that you can solder off and use to modify your motherboards and graphics cards. So it's absolutely stupid to be using this with an, uh, you know, a Xeon that, that cannot be overclocked, but it looks so slick in the machine, I had to put it in there. So yeah, I probably would recommend this more for a gaming rig, but we got it and I wanted to tell you what it does. So we also had the uh, CM Storm Spawn mouse that I love, I freaking love the way this thing feels, even though it's kind of short. I love the way it feels. So I decided to throw that over there and um, I wanted some brown switches. I've got my Corsair brown switches over here. So with the editing rig, I decided to just stick with pretty much Cooler Master and Asus and A-Data. And we've got the uh, um, Quick, what is it, the Quick Fire XT in browns now. It actually feels really good. I, I love brown switches. Just me, you like the blue switches over there. Green. Green switches, as clicky as you can get them. But you know, to each his own. 80 grams. <laughs> 80 grams, what? Represent. I didn't even mention the graphics card. That's kind of important for a rig like this no, because not. graphics cards are important these days. So I'm using the uh, Asus R9-290X, and this is the overclock. It's got the direct CU2 on board. One thing I like about this is it's basically a 7970, but the uh, cooling unit, they've improved it uh, by giving you a fan on the front that's both an impeller and a blower, so it does double duty. Uh, it looks a little weird, but they've uh, that, that's allowed them to go from a three-slot cooling unit to a two-slot cooling unit and still keep things nice and cool. I'm using that one because I love OpenCL for editing rigs, um, and that's going to make you know Adobe faster. Um, it's going to make a lot of things faster. Rendering is going to be nice. I mean, even some 3D programs that, that support OpenCL. And if you want to do some Bitcoin mining, it's a hell of a way to go. Prices are still higher than they should be. Makes me angry. Damn price gougers, but hey. I like this card a lot, and I really like OpenCL for um, an editing rendering machine. Last but not least, the 27-inch monitors that we have from Korea, like the Shimmy in here, in a house like this with all of the glass 
I've been getting headaches every single day. They look good. I mean, they're good IPS panels. So we've got the uh, PB278Q. It's 278Q. Now this is a 27 inch um, PLS panel. It's a PLS is like a version of IPS that's supposedly better in some ways. Um, the thing I like about it the most, I mean, frankly, it's it's a lot more elegant than, than the uh, Korean monitors. I mean, it's a couple hundred bucks more than the Korean monitors, but it's a lot more elegant and it's not reflective. That's worth all the money to me because I have all these windows. Uh, the other thing I like about it, just the fit and the feel, the fact that you can make it vertical just with the stand. Uh, it is Visa compatible if you wanted to put it on a monitor arm, and it is a little bit heavier than the, 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 the Shimian over here. Um, the, the viewing angle on this is 178 degrees. It, it does, you can see it from all different angles. It's got a really nice viewing angle. Um, Color reproduction on this is about as sharp as you're going to get with a 1440p monitor that I've seen with these eyes right here. So I was really happy with the color reproduction on it, so I'm glad to have that one around for our editing rig. I, it's it's the point where I want to like steal it from the editing rig and put it on... You're trying to steal it too. Like we're all trying to steal it to replace our Korean monitors. I still like the Korean monitors if you got 300 bucks and that's all you've got and you want 1440p, I still like them, especially when the sun goes down, they look just fine. But when the sun's up and the things like lights hitting it, I don't know, I like the, love the way that one does. You still see some lights on it, but it's not the same, man. Oh, it's like a mirror. Yeah, it's not a mirror. It's nice. And the, 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 that's not the, uh, that one over there you're looking at, that's the shimmy, and it's not glossy or anything like that. It's just a panel. I don't know. Maybe the X-Star would be a good way to go. Also, this is pixel perfect and guaranteed and all that stuff. I like that. So our editing rig is complete. I'll also be using this for capture. I forgot to mention that I've got the Live Gamer HD capture card in there from Aver Media, and that's gonna be used, like the HDMI is gonna come out of this thing and go right into that so we can do live capture of events and live capture for the tech and that sort of thing. Uh, it's really gonna be doing a lot of capturing and I use Open Broadcaster, it, you know, the Live Gamer HD works with that and has about a two millisecond response difference. So I, I set the audio to, to sync up with about two milliseconds response time difference and then it works perfectly. So I am very happy with the editing rig. And uh, I think what you guys can do with this here is you, you don't necessarily have to go out and build the exact same rig. I'm just playing with all of these components together in ours. Some of them are a little bit impractical like the ROG front panel is kind of ridiculous, but we had, you know, had it here, decided to put it in there. Why not? Um, because it was compatible with the motherboard. But really, the Xeon um, and just each individual part is something that you can consider for your own editing slash gaming slash capture rig. It'd be good for all three of those things. All right, that's enough of this video. Let's go downtown. It's St. Patrick's Day, right? Yep. Well, lucky me. Scottish. You left Ireland. I know I left Ireland because there's freaking mountains. Right up here, just go. I'm a mountain person. Dude. You slow pan, yeah.